I'm Rick Peters and welcome to Fortinet Live. I'm your host today and as the CISO for Operational Technology, I am truly honored to be joined today by Tony Perillo. He is a global leader of cybersecurity at Schneider Electric and they're a true partner of Fortinet's and just delighted to have you here today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You know, it's uh, it, you know, we've been in it to win it for for quite some time, Tony, and and you know the challenges of operational technology and what we're trying to accomplish in that space are very cross cutting, right? We've been busy in in the endeavor of trying to raise the bar, right, to to be able to deliver safe and continuous operations, you know, again around the globe, and that that's a big challenge today in 2022, oh, yeah. greater than ever, right? Yes. Um, you know, but the good news is Schneider Electric is really known as a leader, a leader in providing automation and control uh, system solutions focused on making the most of, of energy and the resources. So, you know, with, with your permission, I'd like to talk about that from a Schneider Electric business perspective today. Sure. Excellent. So let's just dive right in. Um, today, what are the trends that, that are truly impacting Schneider Electric's business? So the world shift to more electrical and more digital is uh, is a, frankly amazing. The breakneck speed that it's currently happening at is uh, eye watering. So, but you know, it has to be done obviously in a secure manner. You know, it's the uh, convergence of the IT and OT that you just mentioned that makes it uh, makes it sets the stage for the greater efficiency, greater sustainability, the you know, the better for our environment, better for uh, people, and and more resilient. So Schneider Electric ourselves, we are not critical infrastructure, but we are the suppliers of critical right. infrastructure around the world. So a lot of, uh, of the operators depend on us and, you know, in energy management, data centers, healthcare, hospitals, et cetera, the big thing. And Schneider Electric, you know, we're, we are committed to be a trusted supplier. We want to be part of the solution, part of the ecosystem, uh, as along with Fortinet, as, you know, as uh, the ongoing partnership we have to make sure, you know, we're keeping the lights on around the world. You know, it's interesting. I, I, I think you can really footstop that word trust today. More important than ever. And boy, have we, we've seen a sequence of events. Uh, and it's not confined, obviously, to the period where we've all been facing a global pandemic. I certainly didn't help it. it it sped up some innovation, but it certainly illustrates the importance of trust more than ever, right? And Absolutely. so you turn you turn to those you trust because you've built that that relationship over time. You know, um, what today is top of mind for you as a technology leader at Schneider Electric? So number one is resilience. You know, we have to make sure that you know our company's resilient, our supply chain is resilient. We've got to make sure the critical infrastructure that I already talked about is resilient. You want to make sure that we'll be able to withstand the hits and, uh, and, and problems that happen, whether they're from a, a, a natural disaster or an emergency or whether they're man-made, etc. So resilience is the biggest thing. And then uh, allow me to double click on what you said about trust. You know, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's up and down the supply chain. We need to be Part of it, you know, trust is uh, not easily gained and and but quickly lost, and you need to you know uh, develop that trust o over years, uh, working together. You know, our end-to-end -end secure by design, privacy by design uh, process has uh, made sure that you know we provide systems and uh, products that are going to be secure and are going to uh, help protect you as long, you know done in a secure. Uh, environment, of course, and you know we look for you know global standards like IEC 62443. Mm -hmm. you know, 4-1 is how we uh, um, maintain our security uh, posture across of our, across our factories and across uh, our infrastructure. You know, there's a unique language that's spoken in operational technology, but I think you you come back to the fact that uh, you, designing in you use that term a couple of times there, but designing in security is sort of a foundational premise to be able to do things repeatedly. And that builds on that trust and that confidence. And it's certainly a part of the journey with Fortinet and Schneider Electric. And it's what got me excited four years ago when I joined Fortinet. And, that, and it, it keeps me equally enthusiastic today. But today, what challenges or trends in cybersecurity are at the top of your mind? 
So one of the biggest threats that really accelerated during the pandemic is uh, ransomware. And you know, we saw that with Colonial Pipeline. We saw that other places. I think the uh, the bad guys were hunkered down like we were and allowed them to be better organized and uh, be more focused on some of the, the uh, targets that they want to be on and have a more coordinated approach so that they actually you know, have you know, front office, back office, a whole organizations that uh, do that ransomware. So that's uh, that advanced level that it's at now is is not what we have ever seen in the past. So that's uh, number one. And then the second uh, big threat is you know, the supply chain threats. Of course, you know, solar winds is the, the biggest example. And, you know, I mean, APT, advanced persistent threat, it clearly was an advanced persistent threat that took months and months, potentially years to get those snippets of software in there put those back doors in there. That was not easy. That was you know, dedicated effort. Uh, a lot of people worked on that. It took a, a, a lot of effort and it was successful. Uh, so if it can be done at SolarWinds, can it be done elsewhere? Absolutely. So we need to always be looking for that. And yeah, you know, we talked about um, you know the ITOT convergence. Now that we're at the IT hacking can affect the physical infrastructure, which can actually you know kill people, can destroy infrastructure can cause all kinds of problems that, you know, uh, previously we never really worried about. You know, Tony, it's interesting. Your, your response kind of highlights two ends of the spectrum. You know, today, you know, certainly everyone's worried about ransomware and it's it's become its own service industry. It's quite interesting to watch that evolve, right? It's a back-end service industry that, while it's unethical, the reality is it's thriving, it's profitable, and it continues to grow. And, you know, the timeline typically is considered quite short, right? Measure, can be measured in minutes or hours from the time I gain access. Where, as you want to contrast that, you talked about, you know, supply chain attacks and, and solar wind sunburst. And, you know, that was more typical what I would have characterized as a well thought out, sophisticated attack chain, right? Almost a year of reconnaissance before they deployed on a very wide array of, of targets, but very successful. In that case, the patients paid off and it allowed them to gain access to, a, to hundreds of targets uh, and then be able to take those next steps, right, to gain persistence, to be able to do privilege escalation and accomplish, like you said, longstanding effects that literally take years to clean up. So you know, we have to deal with both ends of the spectrum. Yes. Um, and, and today, you know, the perimeter really has shifted to the edge. And, and that has implications for security, obviously. How does that impact uh, your security strategy, given the proliferation of edges and devices and, and the demand for data? So the edge obviously greatly increases the attack surface, which uh, means you need to even you know, double down on the secure by design. Unless you design it securely from the beginning, you can't you know, be able to see where the... Uh, you know, where the impact points are, where the, the biggest threats and vulnerabilities will be. You have to continually review that. So, but it's, uh, it makes things so much more complex. So that secure by design brings some level of order and discipline to you know, uh, a critical infrastructure network or, or a, the network inside a plant or oil refinery or something like that. So, so that uh, by developing it securely from the beginning, you actually can you know, see it and, and security professionals like ourselves can actually stay on top of it rather than, you know, a lot of ad hoc stuff that was done in the past. You know, I, I love that response because the implication is you have smart people at the operations level who truly understand the nuts and bolts of operational technology. It's not just the, the IT experts coming into the room saying, hey, we got this problem solved. You know, you're bringing those subject matter experts in to accomplish security by design. I think that's a foundational piece. It can be missed uh, because OT brings that complication to it, right? It's there are unique challenges that are absolute. And you've got to uh, be respectful of the language, fluent in that business. Certainly, Schneider is an expert in, in that area. You know, how would you advise your peers when it comes to securing the evolution of uh, the what we'll characterize as IoT and industrial IoT devices? Because again, that's that's a proliferation issue all by itself. Yes. So, well, number one, uh, you need to start with the secure by design. So you stick to the standard frameworks, uh, you know, IEC 6443, I mentioned for mm -hmm. you know, some of the electrical equipment, but, you know, NIST CSF, ISO 27001, 
those frameworks are peer reviewed by thousands of CISOs and other security professionals around the world. So stick to those, they're repeatable, they're methodical, they, they drive you in the correct direction. Try to do your own thing, uh, I disagree with, you know, it, you should stick to the tried and true. And like I said, you're benefiting from all those other CISOs inputs into that framework. So that's, uh, that helps uh, govern your people, your process, your technologies. The, the full you know uh, spectrum of uh, security and of course you know with your eyes on the other on the other triad CIA you know, confidentiality mm -hmm. and availability excellent so we're going to turn our attention to our value of our partnership and and today how are you using Fortinet to protect your environment and and those of your customers so Fortinet is a trusted partner there they've been a uh, a big part of the cybersecurity ecosystem for years now, and are a big partner of ours. So as I talked about, you know, you know, I always used to, five years ago, I would tell everybody in the customer company, cybersecurity is a team sport. I need everybody to do your part. I need you. And it's much bigger than that now. The team sport is every company that's involved, every subcontractor, every contractor, all the vendors have to play their part. You know, I'm here in Boston now, so the Bill Belichick do your job thing right. you know, resonates. And so you have to work together. And there's other players that you need to bring into the ecosystem. You have to bring in the government. You have to bring in yes. the regulatory bodies. You need to bring in, you know, uh, the other operators, the other people that are connected to this uh, ecosystem. So the team sport that cybersecurity was even five years ago now is enormous. It's and we need to work together. We have to have that trusted relationship like uh, Schneider and Fortinet have to work together and help, uh, you know, each do our part and help bring, you know, a little bit of extra safety and security to our world. Well, I love that. You, you're, you're driving home the point of, you know, if you're used to being myopic, you better get out of that comfort zone right now because yes. you, you, the, the situational awareness and the need to, to collaborate across a myriad of relationships not just supply chain, although that's gigantic, right? That's a that's an initiative in and of know. itself that takes months, if not years, to achieve that level of fidelity that you really desire. And I think we're on, we're on the road to that. Hey, a final question before we close here. What would you share with other OT leaders on why you selected Fortinet as your security vendor and uh, technology partner? So I would say, you know, like I said, it's... You've uh, been a pillar of the cybersecurity ecosystem for a long time now. Uh, you're dependable, uh, or we enjoy working with you. Um, every company has to be involved and, and really step up. And, and things like this podcast, for example, are, are a way that you're stepping up and getting getting the word out to everybody that uh, you know that we need to work together. We need to be in this together. We need to all uh, be part of the solution. And anyone who drops the ball, figuratively or literally, is going to cause problems for all of us around the world. You know, Tony, I enjoy every opportunity to share thought leadership in this this space with you and 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 your Schneider Electric peers. Um, we are certainly in it to win it together. We understand that, right? We also understand that the job is far from done. Uh, we continue to work it. We roll up our sleeves every day, and we collaborate, and we will continue on that journey together. Really appreciate your time today, and I just want to say thanks for joining us at Fortinet Live. Thank you. Happy to be here, and uh, hopefully you'll have me back. Absolutely. And for everyone else, this is Fortinet Live. <laughs>